Welcome to Hearth Zone Live, the show that is unlike any other cigar show. We have the most eclectic lineup of guests, of which some smoke cigars and some do not. Some will be willing to try. Either way, we bring you the best content weekly. If you are tuning in for the first time every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m., we go live on the Team Shirtless Mike YouTube channel. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, and leave comments while I'm live. Thank you for tuning in. And you can follow me on social media on my Facebook Facebook page just search for shirtless Mike and make sure you give that page a like and also on Instagram at shirtless Mike 2020 so as my quest to bring you more ladies of the leaf um, this week I have a very special guest my second sister of the leaf who I had um, a chance to interview uh, what's going on What's going on, Tyler? What's up, brother? So this is my second sister, the Leaf, who I've had a chance to interview, uh, Jamie Stevens. She is a cigar reviewer for Cigar Talk podcast over there with Rob Jones. Shouts out to Rob Jones. And she also is big on Instagram. She, I think she has like 8,000 followers on Instagram. Um, you know, she's she's very well known as Cigar Eyes 717 And I'm getting this lit here. So give me a second. I'm getting this cigar lit tonight. I'm smoking a San Geronimo by Dr. Gabby Caffey. And we got some people pouring in the comments here. So I'm going to go ahead and show your comments. What's going on? Village Food Tours. What's going on, friend? All right, so without further ado, I'm going to bring on our guest, uh, Jamie Stevens, a.k.a. Cigar Eyes 717 and I uh, hope you guys enjoy the show, so here goes our guest. What's going on? How you doing? Hey, I am good. Freezing, but good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you shouldn't have left Florida, you, you know, but hey, that, that is what it is. I keep uh, reminding myself that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, so how have you been during this pandemic? Um, as good as you can be, I guess. You know, I still continue to work full time. Um, I haven't stopped working. I've just been trudging along. I think, like most people, and yep. hopefully, it ends soon. <laughs> That's my definitely. ultimate goal. Yeah, I definitely joined the ranks of working from home. You know, doing political surveys. They moved us to. To working from home so so yeah i got some i got comments coming in so that's a good thing so we'll get started with the interview here so you grew up in my area melbourne florida mm -hmm. tell me about your early life and a little bit about what it was like growing up in your family uh let's see yep grew up in melbourne florida 30 something years ago <laughs> i won't say my age 30 something years ago um you know what i had i had a great childhood um, my dad was a professional photographer. Um, he did that the whole time I was growing up. My mom owned her own restaurant. And I'm an only child. I have one half brother um, who's he's about 15 years older than me. So we didn't really get close until I became an adult. And we actually had <laughs> stuff to talk yeah. about. Um, but you know what? I had a pretty, you know, normal, fun Florida childhood. For the most part, you know, you went to the beach, you hung out with your friends, um, you know, pretty much the norm um, until I would say about high school. And then that's when my my dad uh, was in a motorcycle accident when I was in high school. Um, and so from there, it just kind of shifted a little bit, um, but still good. You know, you have your ups and downs like any other teenager, but you make it out. Yeah, definitely, especially in Brevard County, because you know Brevard County, it's it's like a, you know how it is, it's like a freaking pit around here. You know what I'm saying? So if you make it out, if you survive, then you're pretty good. You know, making it out of Brevard County. County. Well, you so. know what? I've I've come and gone there. <laughs> like I've moved. I I'm a big mover. I've I've moved a lot. Um, I've probably moved twenty times. So, you know, I've gone back and forth to Florida a few times. It's like I still haven't found my sticking place. Um, yeah. I eventually want to go. Um, but I think I'll probably end up back in Florida eventually. 
Yeah, definitely. And so probably about a month ago, you posted an about me post with random facts about yourself. Yeah. Uh, you said that you play both the piano and the violin. Did you start with, you know, with playing as a kid or was it something that you picked up later in life? Tell me about that. Um, you know, I started my mom and my dad. My dad played the drums and he said, you know, you need to be a musician like me. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> Uh, okay. He goes, but you need to learn piano because that's like the universal instrument. You should learn piano and learn how to read music. So when I was five, they just stuck me into, you know, piano lessons. And I continued that all the way through high school. Um, and I, I picked up the violin. I think I was like six or seven. And I said, oh, this, this is a pretty, I like this instrument. It is pretty. Um, and so I just started that and I played that all throughout high school too. So it just mm. continued through there. I love it. I don't do it enough now, um, but. Yeah, yeah it's, like one of the, it's like one of those things, you know, you just kind of, you know, you just kind of, you, you know, you, you kind of follow out from doing it so much, so. Yeah, I mean, and I did, I kind of just grew out of it. Once I got older, I was like, meh. I said, I have more interest in doing that. So I just went a whole different route. Yeah, definitely. And uh, you also mentioned that you studied Taekwondo for over 10 years and you were a second degree back black belt. Yeah. You know, as we all know, that takes a lot of discipline. Describe what your journey was like on your way to earning a second degree black belt. Honestly, it was a lot of just be trying to become a better person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. I hate to say it, um, but, you know, I, you could be a little brat as a kid. And, you know, my... I was making a sports, you know, when I was, I was very busy. I feel like I never had any downtime. Like I did softball, I did instruments, I did all this stuff. And I was like, let's just add martial arts to the pile too. Why not? I loved it. I loved watching all those movies. Like I loved blood sport <laughs> when I was a kid and watching yeah. all the movies with my dad. And I was like, I like this. And I actually ended up really loving it. Uh, the only thing that was strange was that it was like me and one other girl in these classes. So, mm. I mean, I just had to learn how to fight the boys and that just kind of lasted all throughout high school. <laughs> too. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially like if you're in an area where, you know, you kind of had to learn to, to fight with all the guys, you know, kind of, you know, it definitely builds uh, discipline and, you know, strength on your end. Um, have you actually had to use your Taekwondo skills in real life in a real life situation to defend yourself? And if you have, tell me about that. Um, I've used it a few times. Like I said, I, you know, I struggled a little bit once I got older in my late teens, um, early 20s. I may have done some things that I shouldn't have not involved with some people I shouldn't have. Um, and, yeah, I've had to defend myself before. Uh, I haven't said that I actually, you know, like using it and, you know, whatever, but, you know, you get yourself into some situations where you just, maybe my mouth ran a little too much. Uh. <laughs> and, you know, I, you know, I had, especially when I was younger, I had that foot and mouth syndrome where I would just fire out. I still do sometimes, I admit, but I still yeah. fire out stuff. And then I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. And, yeah. you know, you just got to roll with the punches, literally. Yeah, definitely. Hey, at least you're not writing checks that your ass can't cash. At least you can back up your talking shit because, you know, a lot of people, they just talk shit. And then next thing you know, they're getting their ass beat and they just get what's handed to them. At least yeah. you can, at least uh, you're prepared and, you know, and, and know how to and know how to defend yourself in that situation. So outside of living and growing up in Florida, you have lived in Tennessee for a while in your early 20s. I did. And then eventually ending up in Pennsylvania. How did you end up making those moves outside of Florida? Uh, well, in, when I moved to Nashville, um, I was actually, I started seeing a guy in high school and, you know, we had a long-term relationship and um, we ended up getting engaged and his, his family was from Tennessee and loved it. And we thought, well, why not try it? So we said, let's just go. Let's do it. We didn't have anything holding us back. Let's go to Nashville. So we did. And we just stayed there a few years and honestly loved it. it it's an awesome town. I love Tennessee. It's beautiful. Um, yeah. It's great. 
yeah, I've been to Nashville before. It's definitely a nice, you know, it's a nice city. You know, they got some cool cigar shops out there. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of cool shops. And we worked at a really cool place. I mean, I worked at the Ryman Auditorium um, in downtown Nashville. So you got to see so many different musicians and, you know, we you'd be working and then all of a sudden you heard a voice on stage and it was Robert Plant. I mean, Robert hmm. Plant. And yeah. you sit there like with your jaw dropped, like, oh, my God. You know, I was like starstruck every week just with the different people that were coming in and out. It was awesome. Yeah, definitely. So how did you end up in Pencil- in Pennsylvania, though, later on, though, too? Um, later on, you know what? It's funny. Is it all a, guy, a men thing? I don't know. So, <laughs> so my um, husband was actually from, you know, Pennsylvania. And yeah. I had been living in Florida for a long time and needed a change. You know, I get bored easily too. I will say yeah. that I get bored pretty easily. And I'm like, you know what? Let's spice it up a little bit. Let's go someplace else. I've never lived North. And I said, let's try it out. I've always wanted to live where winter is. And then I lived here and then I go, <laughs> who does this willingly? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I just kind of, went on a whim and here we are yeah definitely definitely and so uh you are a real cigar smoker a true cigar smoker you aren't your typical instagram girl and that's the reason why i wanted to invite you on my show because you have sub- substance we need more substance from women in the cigar world not only a pretty face how long have you been smoking cigars and what got you into smoking cigars um i've been smoking off and on about 10 years probably more uh, my dad smoked when I was younger. He he was like that a uh, uh, special occasion smoker. That's what I what I called him. So if there was like a birthday or like family was together, he'd pull out the cigars. It wasn't like an everyday thing. And I was mm. curious when I was younger. I was like, "What are you doing? You know, what is that over there? I want to try." Um, and he was like, Mm-mm. "You know, you're not trying until you get older." But then, you know, he passed away and I was only 14 when he passed away. And so I never got to experience it with him. Um, So I felt like once I got older, I was like, let's see what all the hype is all about. Um, I did smoke cigarettes for a few years and, you know, eh, not my thing. Um, You know, I still do occasionally. I admit I admit it. I'm guilty. Oh, I Um, saw the flack you got on Instagram posting a picture. (laughs) You know what? But it's. It's me though. It's like you know what I do still sometimes, but you know it's one of those things like oh crap I forgot my cigars at home, and yeah. but I have my one pack of cigarettes that I've had for like two years now, <laughs> you know, on my truck, and I was like I need one, and yeah I did get a lot of flack, but it's not like it's a an everyday thing. It's a, like a once in a great while thing. But yeah, yeah. so I, back to I'm, I ramble, but like I it's okay. I just picked it up. I tried it and I said, you know what? Now I see what the hype's all about. And it just kind of went from there. It went from like an occasional thing to now a daily thing. Yeah, so. definitely. Definitely. And uh, you were not only a sister of the leaf, but you were also a mother and a wife and you have a massive work responsibilities. How do you balance it all out and find time to enjoy a cigar or two daily? I make the time. Um, I don't have a lot of time. Yeah, I am pretty busy, but I feel like I give myself a window of like space. Like when I get home from work, I have a window. Yeah, of when I can smoke. Weekends is different. You know, I don't work on the weekends, and you know, family you're in and out, so I have more time then. But during the week, I kind of schedule that time. That way, I make sure I have a little bit of like peace and downtime before the tornado. <laughs> happens again oh yeah no i could definitely relate to that i'm even though i don't have kids i'm not married but i still you know i still make sure i make the time and right now i definitely got a lot of time since work's been slow and i'm mm-hmm. kind of looking for something else so i got plenty of time right now but you know even when i'm busy um you know you just gotta take the time and and uh you know and make that time for your for your own mental health and oh everything. yeah for sure and so, and so uh so do you have modeling aspirations? I see you pose oh, in no. a lot of your pictures. You should definitely look into modeling so women in cigars can have some true representation. You know like, I know you- I've heard that before, and I, I honestly don't I don't get it. 
I'm not. Yeah, you know what? They're pictures or whatever. But you know what? These pictures are staged. They are like, it takes like 30 pictures to get one that looks really good. <laughs> I'm just not, I think I'm too awkward. Like to just actually stand in front of somebody and, you know, it's just not me. I mean, you do it on Instagram, you know, you might as well just take that to the next level and, you know, you do it in a classy way. So, you know, you, you kind of po you're, you're doing that. Like I thought some of those pictures that you posted, like, I know you do it yourself, but it looks yeah. like, you know, you're posing for the camera. So, you know, I, I think you, you know, that that could be something, you know, a next step, you know what I mean? I mean, it, it could, I don't know if it's necessarily me. Um, but you never know. I mean, it's not like I'm opposed to it. I just think I'd be a little bit awkward <laughs> in those situations. Like I don't, I can pose when I'm like, like posing for myself, like, oh, yeah. well that doesn't look good. But for having somebody else there with a camera in my face, I think I'd be a little bit like, yeah, like, what do I do? I mean, but it's not really that much of a, you know, a sidestep or a, a transition though, because you know, just pretend like, you know, you taking a picture, somebody else taking a picture is you taking a picture. Yeah. I mean, you never know. Could happen. Yeah, yeah definitely. And so uh, you have a massive Facebook and Instagram following. I noticed that you also help promote cigars sometimes along with other stuff. How did you get started as a cigar influencer? And did you intentionally try to grow your following or did it just happen to, gra you know, gradually over time? Honestly, it just happened. I don't, I don't even know how it happened. It just, it just like all of a sudden it went from like, oh, you know, why don't I start posting some of these cigar, you know, pictures? I'm smoking them. And honestly, I wasn't taking any pictures of them because I was like, mm, you know, uh, mm. I said, you know, why, why do I need, I wasn't involved like with Instagram or anything like that that much. But then I said, well, let's try it. See what happens. Here we are. Like it just kind of developed over time. And it definitely increased more once I started doing like the cigar reviews. It started picking up a little bit more. But now I'm like, who? Like, you're following me? Like, I, <laughs> like, I still get so weirded out, but I'm like, why me? Um, I don't really like understand because I'm just a regular, you know, normal, everyday person that just likes to smoke cigars every day. Um, yeah. It's just interesting to me. I'm, I just, you know, I don't see. I don't know why, I guess. And then I see some that have like, like tons of like 40, 50,000. And I'm just like, like, yeah, um, I, I don't know. That's so I mean, for you. I mean, 8,000 is a lot. I don't even have 8,000, you know, and you know, probably like at least a lot of people know who I am, but I'm still struggling to, to get to 2000, but you know, it's something that's been hard for me, but you know, just, you know, I think that's what people want. They, when they follow somebody, they don't want somebody who's superficial necessarily. Yeah. You know, you just keep it, you just keep it all the way real. Oh, I got a comment here from my boy, Johnny Smokes Uncut. He's, he's over there in Pennsylvania. He works mm -hmm. for, um, CI. I forgot which CI he works for, but, he's um, probably cold too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I told him, I said, I got, I got your region on my show. You know, I got you. So, it was cool. He he came through. Johnny Smokes is a cool cat, but uh, but yeah, you know that's what people look for when they're yeah. trying to follow somebody. They want somebody who's just authentic, and that's kind of what you bring to the table. You know, you you also post, you know, your family, your son, and just you know, you just you, you're not you're not trying to to uh, entice. You know, you're not trying to be some some sex symbol in some way. You know, you keep no. it very classy. And that's what, you know, at least that's what I appreciate. You keep it very classy and, you know, that that's what the cigar, you know, industry or cigar community needs, you know, nowadays. Yeah, and we're so. missing a lot of that with the sisters here. Uh, I will be honest, you know, we need a lot more of that representation instead of what is actually being presented. I hate to say it like that, but yeah, just facts. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And so... 
I know you've been asked this about this, but I'm going to go about it a different way. Uh, do you think you have way more classy stand up guys and followers who actually comment with respect or are they, or are there way more thirsty, creepy types? Also, how did you deal with the bullshit? Um, I think it's a mix of both. You know, I am nice to whoever, like if you message me, I will do my best to message you back and do whatever and talk about stuff. But if you're going to act a certain way, I'm, I'm not going to respond to it. That's just my way of handling it. I just mm -hmm. don't, I don't interact with it. I don't see the point in it. Yeah. I, there is, there's always going to be those, those men and things like that, that make the comments and whatever. Go for it. If that's what, you know, <laughs> knocks your socks off by making those comments, go yeah. for it. But I'm not like, I'm not responding. I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, hey, daddy. I'm <laughs> um, sorry. This one's not going to be your sugar baby. Like, it's <laughs> not, it's not, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like, it's not going to happen. So, yeah. I just kind of roll with it. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I see, you know, I see a lot, of, you know, I just kind of like watch what dudes, you know, put on, under, you know, you know, I'm cool with a lot of sisters of the leaf who are on Instagram and, you know, I'm talking about, you know, people like you and, you know, Smokini and just yeah. a bunch of the, you know, like top notch sisters of the leaf who know their shit. And I'll watch some of these comments. I'm like, why, why do you think that being thirsty is going to get you somewhere? Like most of, most of these ladies of the leaf are either married or in committed relationships. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's one, you know, if, if, if I had a wife or a girlfriend, like I wouldn't want, you know, I even made a video about this. Did you see my video about, about, uh, yeah, about the unsolicited dick pics? Cause you know, that's, you know, you, you got to look at it. It's, it's sexual harassment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, you know, we need class in the cigar world and, you know, and I believe that, you know, the vast majority of, of brothers of the leaf, they are very classy, but you know, you get that small, you know, that small little bit. And even guys get it too. Like there's there's been a couple cigar guys like Peterson Boswell. <laughs> I'm sure you heard of him. Yeah, he'd of like, he'd be like I want to buy some cigars for you, and I'm not trying to give him free promo or nothing. But you know, we, you know, <laughs> guys kind of get it too, just not at that same level. Or you know, we might get some guys smoking like a six by sixty and be like, you know, like, hey buddy, how you doing? Like you know, just it just sounds it just comes off kind of oh, weird. I mean, so. Yeah, it happens to me too. You know. Lord help us if I smoke a big ring gauge cigar. Whoa, you know, it's like sign me up for 10 million messages. Like, come yeah. on, like, let's, you know, we're not in high school anymore when those were funny jokes. Yeah. You know, we're all older now. Let's just like, I don't know, take it somewhere else. That's what I, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I know for me, like, you know, I'm, I'm cool with your husband. You know, we share memes and stuff like that. So he already knows I'm not going to, you know, come at, you know, you a certain way and, you know, stuff like that. You know, it's just all about, it's all about the respect factor. And that's with anybody, at least on my end, you know, guys, we need to continue to be respectful to our sisters of the leaf uh, and all that good stuff. So yeah. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep this going here. So who are some sisters of the leaf that you follow online? That I follow online. Well, I, I follow a lot. I follow Melanie that you had on. I follow, I love like Stogie Doe. Man, her pictures, bomb. Her pictures are gorgeous, gorgeous. And a real sister of the leaf. And like mm -hmm. Purple Lady and of course Cigar Vixen. Oh my God, I follow so many. I try and when I see like new ladies getting added, I'm like, yeah. ooh, follow, follow, follow. <laughs> like I try to follow as many as I can. Um, that way we kind of become, you know, a closer knit group um, yeah. we're all in it together we all love the same thing um it's just getting us all to be you know talking and kind of being like a, a unit together um because we are still pretty rare considering the cigar industry i mean we're definitely getting more and more recognized and noticed yeah but it's still a very small majority considering mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I follow, I follow a lot of sisters of the leaf. I'm cool with, you know, a lot of them. I've met a lot of them either in person or just through 
uh, you know, just through like online video chats yeah. and, and you know what, they're, they're some of the best family of the leaf out there, you know? Yeah, and, for sure. And, and a lot of the women who smoke cigars are not some prissy chick that, you know, is, you know, like is, is, is uh delicate, you know, they can take, they can give shit and take it. So. Well, you gotta, you gotta be able to hang with the boys. Cause you know, if you're going to the cigar lounge, you're probably going to be the only female there. Yeah. Let's, let's keep it real. Or there's going to be one other besides you. Um, rarely do you see where it's like a whole huge group of us together. Mm -hmm. It's usually, you know, one or two and you're just like hanging with the boys. It's just what it is. Yep, definitely, definitely. So, uh, what do you think about some of the girls on Instagram that are just there to be a pretty face? They pose with unlit cigars. They know next to nothing about cigars and just don't have substance. They're, you know, they're just there to look cute. Does this annoy you as a woman who has put in time to gain the knowledge and get, you know, and get to where you are? You know what? It might have annoyed me initially, but it doesn't annoy me anymore because guess what? You can be a pretty face, but that's not going to last forever. I hate to tell you, it's not, it's not going to last forever. And you can do the, the pretend modeling and whatever you want to do, but you know, it's going to catch up to you anyway. You know, it's only going to last a short period of time and then you're going to have to move on to something else that you can hold and model. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. it just, I kind of just ignore it. It's just one of those things where it's like, oh, that's a nice picture. I'm sure she was wearing her lingerie inside her house. Out in the middle of a courtyard. I'm somewhere. like, oh, you know, because that's accurate. <laughs> like, come on now yeah definitely we're gonna switch gears here so last year you started uh reviewing cigars for yeah. cigar talk radio on their website how did that situation come about and did it expand your reach at all or did you expand their reach you know what it's it honestly started because rob messaged me on instagram and was like i like your content you know your pictures you you seem to know a lot about cigars we want a female you know opinion and to be a part of our team and I was like sure why not I said let's try it see what happens and it just kind of went on from there um, I think it's expanded my knowledge because you know what you try things maybe you wouldn't have before you yeah. you know you get to know more people that way um, so it's been great I love it <clears throat> definitely definitely and so um uh, what is your process like for reviewing cigars? Do you have, you know, do you have yourself on a schedule of what to, to review? Or do you just say, hey, I'm going to review this cigar and just go ahead and review it? Well, you know, if somebody, if a company or somebody sends me a cigar and says, I want you to review it, I'm going to review those first. You know, because someone okay. took the time and the money to send me these cigars. So I'm going to do that for them. I'm going to do that because that's just what you do. Like that's showing respect. So yeah. I usually, depending on the time where I get them, whoever sends me first, that's the one I do. And then I do the next one and the next one. Like I try to keep it as much order as I can so that I'm not, you know, going all over the place. Yeah, definitely. I, I can understand that. I think we all got our own processes and, you know, we just got to stick to what works for us. Um, and, uh, since you review cigars and a lot of cigar reviewers come out with top cigar lists, do you have any plans on doing your oh, own yes, top cigars list for the year? Yes, I do. I am proud. I'm going to do a top 10, um, you know, the week after Christmas. I haven't decided what day yet, but I have my list already. Um, it's just haven't even thought of how I'm even going to post that. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I know what I'm going to, I know which cigars already, but I just haven't decided yeah. I'm going to do that yet. You always so, see the down. It's coming. They're all yeah. going to post all at once. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, people who do the top list or whatever, some people review kind of like the criteria. Do you have any special like criteria that you do or you just kind of... You know, because I know for me, trying to rank a cigar is very rough. That's why I don't do any top lists or whatever. Even when I was with Stogie Press, I just kind of like I, I wasn't involved with reviewing. I wasn't involved with doing the top list because it's so hard for me to put cigars in order. And, yeah. you know, I, I feel like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm like 
ooh, this could have went here, this could have went there. Do you have like a special rhyme and reason for it? Or are you just kind of just going to, you know, put it however you see fit? Pretty much how I receive fit. If I like it and I enjoyed it, you know, this is the one I, I'll just do it that way. I mean, are there going to be some, maybe I'm like, oh, that could have been number seven and that could have been number five. Yeah. But really, I mean, ultimately for me, it's the top three. If you think like those are the like the ones that I really loved this year. If you if you see my top ten, it's the top three to focus on. The other ones, they all could have been different numbers. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And um, I know with Stogie Press, they put out. You know, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but they do put it out. You know, if you go on the website, they kind of tell you what the criteria is and if you pay attention throughout the year you could kind of like guess so if somebody goes back and sees your post are they able to like kind of guess they probably um, can. or kind of put two and two together okay cool yeah i mean if you see you know maybe cigars i smoked more than other ones and they i mean you can kind of get an idea because if i really like a cigar i'm going to smoke it a lot that's just how it is and you know that's You'll see that in my top three. You'll be like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And so uh, what cigars have you been enjoying lately during your personal smoking time when you aren't reviewing a cigar? Mm. Personal smoking time. What's that? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, it all depends. And I say this a lot. Probably in all, it all depends on what my mood is that day. I hate to say that, but it really does depending on what, how I'm feeling. Um, you know, I have my like signature ones. Like I love my like Kentucky fire cured, you know, that's the one that you see that people either love it or hate it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love it. So if I'm feeling, I, I'm going to say this, I'm feeling a little feisty. I usually, <laughs> go, <laughs> I usually go like that route. Um, you know, sometimes you just need like a milder stick, like in the morning or something, you know, Go that way. I'm really digging Crazy Monkey. Crazy Monkey cigars. Woo! I love, you know, really into them right now. Of course, like Los Kaidos, you know, I, I love the stick. Um, so, I mean, there's some that, like, I just kind of just play around with. And then I'll just look at my humor. Oh, that looks nice. Let's, let's do this today. Let's just try this out. But I don't really, like, have, like, a set, like, rotation. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm going to smoke this on Monday. Yeah. No. Well, I would just kind of look like a general census. Like me, I've been smoking a lot of these San Geronimo's. Um, you know, it's just a good everyday cigar. So I've been smoking. So, you know, I just try to see because everyone's tastes are all over the place and yeah. different. So. And I think mine is too. I, you know, I'll try any cigar. What? I, I won't. I don't have any bias with, you know, companies or, you know, flavor profiles. I'll try anything because um, yeah. you never know. You might, you know, somebody might hate it. I might love it. it yeah. So you, so you kind of got like a, a you kind of like me, you kind of got like a broad palette, yeah. which is a good thing because that, you know, if somebody d that doesn't, you know, recommend something, there's nine times out of 10, you're going to like it. Exactly. And so, you know, that's how the owner of my old uh, cigar shop I used to go to was like, I would recommend something to him and he had a very picky palate. But if he recommended yeah. something to me, you know, almost right on, right on time, you know, I would like, I would love that cigar. It's just my, my palate is just so broad. So, yeah, I mean, that's me too. I mean, is there some that kind of, I really got to be like the really heavy pepper um, cigars. I have to be in a certain mood for that. It's not like I'm going to wake up in the morning and that, that's what I want. Usually it doesn't happen. Um, so, I, but I still will try it. Like it's just, you know, whatever floats my boat. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. And so what kind of drinks do you like to pair while smoking? It could be non-alcoholic or alcoholic. Uh, number one is coffee. I, oh, yeah. I'm a diehard obsessed coffee person um, all day, every day. Right now, I have Diet Coke, because I love Diet Coke, Diet Coke, and I have Screwball peanut butter whiskey. Oh, uh, nice. I, I love try, it. I tried Screwball when I, for, on my birthday, and I don't know. I I didn't quite. I had it like I had it straight, and I just didn't really like it. But, but I was drinking a lot of other stuff that night. And yeah. I'll have to revisit that. So that that kind of sounds like a cool, uh, 
does the diet coke uh, mix with the screwball does that make it kind of taste like like a like a peanut butter cup or something or you know a little bit um it's i can't really drink it straight either um i have to mix it or else i'm like like I, i'll sit there and go you know like something's in my mouth like uh. but you know i love it it's kind of like a sweeter taste but it's not so sweet to where it's like overpowering if that makes sense yeah, because I was drinking so much other stuff, and I was just like, I'm not really feeling I drank some of it because a friend of mine bought it, and then I was just like, bro, I'm not feeling it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I you know, it just really depends. I do really go for coffee a lot more just because I drink it so much. I mean, I'm drinking coffee all day, every day, so it's mm-hmm. kind of just my go-to to begin with. Um, just all depends. Yeah, I love coffee, too. Like, I, you know, I... I don't really drink it every day, um, but I drink it like a lot of the time when, when I'm in the mood to drink it. And there's nothing like coffee, but I have to make sure I only drink it early in the morning because I'm a terrible insomniac and I'll be up all night if if I drink coffee throughout the day. I've done that a lot and that's not very good for me. Well, see, I can drink coffee at five minutes before bed. Out. Still out. So my dad, my dad's like that and I don't see how people can do it because I'll I will be literally up all night into the next day, I'll be like, you know, like I'm on uh, meth or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't really sleep well as it is. I mean, most people who know me, like I probably sleep four hours a night, average. I'm just not, like I'm a, such a light sleeper as it is. It really just doesn't, you know, it does nothing at this point. I think my brain just, I can never slow down enough in the evening to just be like, because all that coffee you're drinking, that's why. <laughs> you know, I wish it was that, but I think it's just me. I mean, I was even like that as a kid. Like, I will tell you, in probably since I was 13, I have not once set my alarm for work. Not once. See, I wish that could be the case. The only time, like, if I have, like, a third shift job or whatever, I could, I'll could, wake up, you know, on time because it's, like, you know, odd hours to sleep, but... If I if I have to be to work at like seven in the morning, I gotta set an alarm and then and Not me. even if I'm living with somebody, I'll be like, make sure I'm up by this time because I might sleep through my alarm. <laughs> like Yeah, I honestly it's like my body just knows to to get up. If I'm sleeping past honestly, past like six AM, there's something wrong with me. You better take <laughs> you better you better like go to make sure I'm still breathing because uh, yeah, it just doesn't it doesn't happen for me. I wish. Yeah. I'm jealous of those who could sleep. I, I want to be like that. Oh, it's the weekend and I woke up at 10. I'm like, I've been up for five hours. <laughs> <laughs> My day's halfway done. Yeah, because see, like, I could sleep, you know, for a full eight hours or whatever, but it's just, it, it's about the time when I go to sleep. So if I go to sleep at three in the morning, I'll wake up late. If, if I, sometimes I'll wake yeah. up early, like if I've been drinking, but. You know, it's just if if I, if I drink, I automatically just pop up. Like I'll sleep yeah. for like four hours and I'll be stone cold sober, ready to go. You're ready, <laughs> ready for action. Yeah, and so we got to keep this moving here. So on a nice day when you are smoking a cigar, what kind of music are you listening to while you are puffing away? Um, usually '90s grunge. That's my that is my go to music. I it's my favorite. Um, genre you know the the pearl jams and the stone temple pilots and um days of the new those i love i just love that uh, genre but i mean i don't really listen to anything um i'm not really picky i mean there's some stuff i'm like mm, whoop. like <laughs> i'll change like if i'm home and i'm like i'm not listening to that um yeah but typically i go for grunge rock usually Nice. Yeah, kind I wish I could. Dress too. I kind of dress from that time period too, so it just kind of makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And I wish I could relate. I'm more of a hip hop guy. Like I grew up listening to hip hop my whole life, so 
You know, I like to listen to, I like different segments of hip hop though. I like different rappers from different coasts, yeah. you know, different styles, you know, old school. Like I don't really listen to a lot of these new rappers cause they, they kind of just have a weird sound and it, you know, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, you know, when we were kids, you know, our parents would be like, turn off that, you know, they would hate our music. Yeah. But then now, you know, I'm in my third, in my early thirties now. So it's like, I hear these, you know, kids that are like younger than me and I'm just like, I, I really see how these older people were feeling back when I was, you know, yeah. almost a teenager. I, you know what? And I, I honestly, this, this generation of, of teenagers, I, whew, um, you know, I kind of just shake my head a little bit. Uh, it's funny because, you know, one of my good friends has, has a daughter who's 15 and that's a tough age anyway, having a girl that's 15. And she was like, well, let's, she was in the car with me. She's, you know, messing with the radio, which I, I hate to, you're sitting there pushing all the <laughs> buttons and she, you know, puts on, it's like a classic rock station and Aerosmith comes on. Okay. I love Aerosmith. Aerosmith comes on I'm like, oh yeah. I was like, this is my jam. She's like, ugh. you know, she gives me that look of disgust, like, ugh. and I'm like, really? She goes, this sounds so old. And I'm like, <laughs> you just sit there like, mm. like I just had that pout. I'm like, yeah, these guys are older, but they're still awesome. <laughs> and, uh, like expand your mind a little bit. They can't all be the Jonas Brothers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like open your mind to some different music. I just, uh, I, uh, so- sometimes I just want to, with this generation, just want to go, come on, just get out of your bubble expanded a little bit some of the Mm -hmm. best music was decades ago not just came out last week you know what i mean yep and when i was growing up my mom she's into like you know 80s rock and like Mm -hmm. the way in the way she is i would say something and then like my mom would just start singing a song that relates to it and then you know when i was younger she used to embarrass me and now you know i have a much younger sister because after i was already grown my mom got remarried Mm -hmm. so i got i have a nine-year-old sister and and then she's always complaining now that you know that my mom does that i'm like well she's been doing that for 30 plus years marissa so get used to it it happens with my mom too she used to put on like in the car she put on like that light rock she loved like michael mcdonald and like all those like you know lionel richie um, yeah. and it's funny because, you know, back then I was like, oh, this is awful. But, you know, now that I've gotten older, her and I are just jamming out in the car together. I don't care. I'll sing some Michael Bolton and yeah. Jenny G, whatever, you know, whatever makes her happy. And, you know, I appreciate it more now, um, now that I'm older. But I think maybe we were all like that back then. We were all embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> and. And now, you know, even though I'm into hip hop, I, I now that I'm older, I kind of like so, some a little bit of you know rock here and there. But yeah, um, you know, it's like you know, like my mom's big with Bon Jovi because when she was pregnant with me, her and my dad and her best friend went to see Bon Jovi, and uh, you know, I'm part Italian, so you yeah. know, Bon Jovi's, you know, that's you know about as Italian as you could get, and so that's what my mom likes. So I do like some old Bon Jovi and stuff like that, and. You know, I've I've gotten to used to I've gotten you know used to other stuff outside of hip hop, but it's mostly straight up hip hop. So, yeah. uh, in this year because of COVID, virtual herfs have become a big thing. There have oh, been yeah. many virtual herfs smoking and protocol cigars have started twenty four seven rooms on whereby there have been countless Zoom chats. I know Rob Jones has yeah. had a lot of them. I've been on a few. Have you had a chance to hop on any virtual herfs this year? You know, I try to, but like. Like I was telling you earlier, you know, my son is five, yep. um, <laughs> you know, and he has a bedtime, you mm-hmm. know, and a lot of the herbs start late. And as much as I say, I'm good at hanging really late. <laughs> I'm not. Um, I have to get my kid to bed. You know what I mean? I have to get my kid to bed. I have to go to work the next morning. Um, mm-hmm. so I can't hang till till one or two in the morning. I'd love to. Yeah, <laughs> I just can't like I just can't do it and it's funny like people say oh yeah we're going out tonight can you meet us at 10 30 and I go 10 <laughs> 30 like my kid's been asleep for two hours what do you mean 10 30 like I'm in my pjs yeah you know? 
I mean, there's a lot of people, you know, that I know they got small kids, but they still go out. I don't know how people can do both. Like, I don't even have kids. And now I'm yeah. not really like on the club scene like I used to, like, you know, in a more in an urban club, you know, because I would, you know, go to primarily black clubs. Yeah. And so stuff doesn't have it doesn't really pop off to like 1230. And now I've only literally I went to the club like one time this year just because uh, my first guest, he's a friend of mine who's a promoter. So I just went and to show love and, you know, just get out for a little bit. But I got off of work at like just before midnight and I like hurried up and changed clothes real quick and then drove out to Titusville. And I know yeah. you, you know, how. Oh, far yeah, time. I know but I, so I got there like after almost to almost one o'clock because I knew I wasn't going to be there, you know, too long. So I was over at Sports Edge okay. and, um, and, you know, and it was so packed. And so I got in there probably like around one and I was there for like maybe like an hour. And, and I'm just like, you know, now that I'm older, it's like standing around for that long. Like my back hurts. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, it's when you go, you look around, you go have I turned into the oldest person here? And you just look around and you go, oh no. Like, it, you know, you almost get into like, for me, I almost turn into like mom mode too. Um, in a way I'm like, she shouldn't be having that shot. She's already <laughs> really, <laughs> like she's already really drunk. Now this, if that was me 15 years ago, I'd be like, yeah, line them up. Um, <laughs> but now it's just, you know, it's like moving into a different phase. And yeah. like, I'd rather just out. Yeah. And I mean, in, you know, in the urban clubs, like there's people of all age groups, like people from like the early 20s, even people that's older than me, like in their mid mid 30s up into their 40s. And, yeah. um, you know, I think it's just all about a personal preference. Like, yeah. you know, me, I'm just I got out of that a while ago. I just focused on the whole being known in the cigar world thing instead of just being known in like the club. I kind of yeah. gave up all the hosting and all that because I was actually shirtless in the club before I was known as shirtless <laughs> Mike in the cigar world because a friend of mine, we used to, you know, I used to be up on stage and used to be drunk. I would take off my shirt, have my chain. And they didn't call me shirtless Mike. They were just like, they just knew me as that white boy smoking a cigar, turned <laughs> up. <laughs> but you know, it, it, those were some good times. I'm not yeah. saying I won't you know go out anymore, but it's just uh, it's just not something that happens all the time anymore. So uh, we're gonna finish up with this thing here. So on a final note, besides reviewing cigars and being a cigar influencer, is there anything else that you would like to do one day in the cigar industry? Is there one thing I would like to do? Is there anything else? It could be one, two things. It could be a few things, whatever. You know, um, I would love one day to maybe, you know, rep one day um, for, you know, a brand or do something like that in that realm. Um, but I would be pretty particular um, about who um, and, and what brand it is. Um, I, I tend to go more towards you know, the route where I love the cigar companies that give back, you know what I mean? That mm -hmm. work with cigars for warriors, you know, do things like that. I worked, you know, for veterans with veterans for many years. So, you know, that's always been a passion of mine. So doing something in that realm, I would love to do. I just don't know what mm. that circle yeah, definitely. Oh, and that's one thing I forgot to bring up. See, that's what happens when I have my notes on my screen and not like in front of me like that. So, um, do, do, do. so we'll, we'll get into this to end it all because you mentioned working with veterans and stuff. And this is something that I had a question on. As you know, I do yeah. a lot of research. So uh, you graduated from Kaiser University. You got your BA in criminal justice and corrections, but your actual job background, you have worked in the mental health field, helping veterans and being over different programs. Yeah. How does that all tie in? Was it more of that's what you went for and you decided to do something else or what happened with that? Uh, well, my dad, my dad was a veteran. He was in Vietnam. Um, so I got a lot of feedback from that. Um, I also, you know, I, this sounds cheesy, but I really do like helping people. <laughs> you know, yeah. you hear that, like, well, how did you get into this field? I like helping people. Um, and growing up, I actually wanted, um, I thought maybe I would become a judge. I actually thought about that for a long time, maybe going that route. Um, I just didn't know. And then I kind of fell into the mental health field. Um, I started working in it and then I just loved it and I just stuck with it. Um, so I've been doing that for like 20 years now. Um, 
And, you know, veterans are just a special part of, you know, just me. It's just, you know, I have a lot of uh, family members who are veterans. And when I got the opportunity um, to work with them and to actually like run a recovery house, I loved it. Mm. I loved it. It's just, it's just me. I don't, I don't really know. It's yeah. just how I kind I mean, of. It- that's Thank interesting. You. It's it's much needed. You know, our veterans, you know, you know, need a lot of support. And uh, my grandma, she's actually very involved at the VFW yeah. over there off of Post Road. I know you're familiar with. Oh that. yeah, of course. So, right yeah. over there is where my grandma. She, you know, there's a lot of cigar smokers that go there. And yeah. now a lot of the leadership are like, you know, younger, like in their early to mid 40s. So you know, they're they got a lot of cool stuff going on. And my grandma's been a part of that for. That's where she is right now. Like she's, she's like, I'm gonna be gone all day, and I was like, well, that's fine. I like being alone. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I live with yeah, my I, grandma. I so, it. but you know, she's into that, and I've been over there, smoked cigars with the veterans over there, and there's nothing like just you know kicking back, listening to their stories, and you know, and all that good stuff because you know they served our country, so they deserve the support. You know, even after the fact. You know, because a lot of them have been through a lot of stuff and, you know, it's definitely much appreciated what you do. So, you know, even though you didn't serve in the military, no. um, you know, it was, it was you, definitely, you, you I definitely serve. thought about it. I definitely had, was very much um, into, you know, that my, that was my plan for a long time. And then, like I said, you know, like my, my late teens, early twenties, I was, I did some not so um, nice things back then. So, um, the military route really wasn't in the cards for me at that point. Um, do I wish I, I would have been able to maybe get my shit together earlier? Um, that way I could have gone that route. Um, yeah, but I don't, you know, stuff happens for a reason. You know, I still got to do, you know, what I love to do. I working in the mental health field and then working with, you know, veterans. I just love it. It's my, yeah. my passion. I came kind of close to joining the National Guard when I was in high school. I was an Army ROTC. But the really thing that really stopped me was my lack of discipline. Like, you know, because I've always been kind of on the chubby side. And, you know, I had to lose, you know, and, you know, be able to pass for PT. And, yeah. You know, I probably I kinda... wouldn't have been able to back then. Um, I'm actually probably in better shape now um, than I ever been. Because I just, you know, I didn't care about about that back then but this past year you know i've really tried to focus on becoming healthier yeah and and i've noticed that you you said you know not to you know because you, you put it out there but you yeah. uh you said you lost like 80 pounds which yeah you weren't you know i mean you it's not like you were like big or whatever but i mean it's 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 you you do you know you do notice the difference i yeah. know for a fact that you feel you know, healthier and all that. So, I mean, that's, that's awesome. And, you know, cause a lot of times, you know, women, they just, they have their, uh, their, you know, their, uh, body issues where, you know, yeah. they're fine, but, you know, but you have to feel good for yourself, you know, even though yeah, you, you, you didn't really have did. to change, but you know, it's, it's awesome. And, you know, we, we see the results and it's like, you know, you changed your hair color a few times, got some more tattoos. <laughs> you know, and... funny. Everybody's like 2020. They're like, that is, you just totally revamped everything, which, you know, that's cool. You know, I kind of wanted to, you know, get myself back to how, how I wanted to feel. You know what I mean? Like, I had a baby, I, you know, you gain weight, you do all this stuff and you kind of lose focus on yourself, especially after having kids, you kind of divert that. And I was like, you know what? It's time for me. Like I need to take 2020, even though it's been kind of a year uh, Mm -hmm. for a lot of people and just work on myself and, and become the person that I want to be. And, you know, and to show my son, like you can do, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, don't let anything stop you. Even if this COVID not, you know, all this stuff this year, you do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. It's just showing mom's a badass, a total badass. <laughs> <laughs> and there was uh, one more thing. Cause you know, like I said, my, you know, and then we'll end on this. I, I know I forgot some stuff in my notes and I was just like, ah, 
but it helped, you know, make the show better and, you know, to kind of give people more of an insight. So what are things that you like to do that are outside of, you know, cigars? We all got something and, you know, what, what might surprise people? What might surprise people? Um, I would say I am a like true adrenaline junkie. I love, like, I am a very spontaneous person. So, like, I love doing adventurous things. If someone tells me, hey, we're going to go, you know, skydive tomorrow, sign me up. I'm going. Um, do you want to take a trip to something, you know, let's go. Let's do a rip. Like, I love doing stuff like that. I'm not really into the everyday monotonous same schedule. Let's Let's spice it up. Well, you know what I mean? Let's spice it up. Um, you know, of course, you know, I like the tattoo. You know, people say I have tattoos. I like doing that. You know, I like going to shows before they were all canceled. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, I like the shows, you know, just normal stuff, but more of the like adventurous things. I, I just like to do new stuff, see new places and you get to meet awesome people that way. So Yeah, definitely. I know one thing. When it comes to adrenaline, like skydiving, roller coasters, you ain't gonna find me doing that. I like new experiences, but you know, it's it's. I got a lot of respect for people that, you know, will go skydiving. I think yeah. my uh, my stepdad, he's been skydiving before. I don't know how we could do it, but <laughs> I, love it. I love it. It's it's you know, it's a rush. You know, you get that nervous feeling beforehand, and then you just let it just let it fly. Yeah, definitely. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Hopefully thank you had a you. great time. I had a great time interviewing you. I try to I try to, you know, do, you know, interviews in such a way that, you know, obviously the guest feels comfortable and, you know, I'm not trying to ask the same questions that every other show is doing. And plus, I don't only interview people from the cigar community. I interview yeah. people outside of the cigar community. So uh, before we get going, though, tell everybody if, if they don't already know, because this is obviously recorded on YouTube, tell people where they can find you on social media and then we'll go ahead and take it out from there. Well, you can find me on Instagram, of course, uh, Cigar I Seven One Seven, and then of course you can find my reviews on the Cigar Talk podcast website and their Discord. You can see that there also. Nice. Well, thank you so much, and we can chop it up for a few minutes after the show, but we're gonna okay. go ahead and end the show. But I thank you so much, everybody, thank for you. tuning in to Herf Zone Live. And you guys have a wonderful night. Make sure you, if you love this interview, make sure you subscribe. We're, I, I don't know if we've reached 150 subscribers yet, but we should be able to do that tonight. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, like the video, and share it with somebody. Because as soon as we get off of being live, you'll be able to, to do that. And you guys have a wonderful night. 